Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another DIY video. I have got some wins, some fails, some struggles, but all around some good DIYs that in the end I'm very happy with. I hope that you enjoy them too. Let's get started. All right, so starting off for this first one, this is a piece I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And it's pretty cute on its own. You could just put a picture on that little clip, but this is a crafting channel. So we do crafts. <laughs> I'm using my hair dryer to heat up the sticker to take off the back. Uh, heat up the, yeah, to take it off the back. That made sense. I think it made sense. Sand, to try to sand off some of the stickiness. I'm going to end up painting everything, but I wasn't really sure in the beginning because I start out my projects I'm a little unsure where I'm going to head with it. So took off the little clip, sanded the hole, and we're going to paint this with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Fern. Now all of these colors I'm going to do pretty messy until the end. We're going to be going for a like chippy, rustic, farmhouse, whatever adjective you want to use, old um, look to this. So I have seen some old chippy things with like the green coming through and I really like that look. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for in a couple of these today. Um, so I'm going to paint this and then I'm painting like all of the inside edges pieces, which is just like an MDF finish that I'm, I'm painting kind of roughly um, because we won't be doing our chippy technique on those spots. So I'm just giving it a a rough color and at this point I didn't want all of the green to get on the back piece since you can just kind of see through this item and that is why I have a piece of paper there and then I'm just taking a what did I even just say there oh, wow guys I'm struggling with my words but I'm not starting this over so I'm just taking a candle and we're rubbing the wax on different parts of this and this is one way to get the chippy look and then we're going to go over with mineral Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral and we're going to paint the same, kind of a rough, not, you know, amazing coat um, of paint. Um, we're going to just do the same thing again. So we're going to paint with the mineral on the surface. And then in between all of the little edges, we'll just do kind of like a rough coverage there, not worried about a super amazing coverage. I also want to say if you are new here, welcome, welcome to my channel. I like to share fun, easy, budget-friendly DIYs here on this channel. Usually I'm just doing home decor. Um, for the most part, not always, but for the most part. And if you're into that type of thing, I hope that you consider sticking around. Hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, make sure that you don't miss out on my future videos. We're going to do the candle wax again, and basically wherever you put the candle wax, you're going to see it will hinder the paint from sticking. So hopefully you'll understand that at the end. Um, you do want to make sure your paint is thoroughly dry, obviously, before you do the candle wax. You're not just pulling paint off. And then we're going in with our top coat, which is Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. I'm going to do a bit of a better coating here, although all of the little inside pieces and all of the little holes of the window, I guess you could say, that I'm still just kind of doing a little bit of a rough coat because I want a little bit of the mineral, a little bit of the fern color to kind of peek through so that it's kind of got a little bit of everything showing there. And then I decided that I wanted to paint the whole back. And as you can see, like the inside of the kickstand, so to speak, because you're just going to see it right through it. So I did not worry about distressing the back at all, but the front we are, and I'm going in with my little scrapey tool, and I'm just scraping off mainly where, I'm trying to remember, you know, where the wax is, or just kind of the whole thing, but it's going to really pull up where the wax is, and this will reveal the different layers of the paint. And I'm emphasizing where I emphasize the, the wax, which is, I said ax, not wax, um, which is a lot on like the, the ridges, the edges, the, like that's where I feel like natural distressing would occur. So that's what I was going for. And then also went over roughly with some sandpaper as well, just to kind of rough up more if I could. And then we're just going to give it a wipe down with a baby wipe to get off all of that um, dust and debris. And then I'm going to just poke in the hole that was there originally with a little sharp tool. We're not putting the little clip back on though. I wanted a screw and the one that was in there was too small for what I wanted. So whenever I take things apart, I save all the pieces and keep them in my craft supply. So I pulled out a screw and we're just going to put that in, not all the way. Um, I just wanted something to hang a little wreath on. So that's what I'm going for here. Now the wreath that I'm using 
was off of something at some point, but it's, I don't know, it's not that great. So I'm going to add to it with this leaf garland. This is a, or a, I think it's like a, this might have been in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. I'm not really sure, um, but I've been using it for a while, and I'm just going to add to my existing wreath, but you could always just make a wreath just out of this um, or use anything your little heart desires, but I just wanted to kind of add to it a little bit, and we're going to make ourselves a little wreath. Trim that off. It is wired, so it just wraps around really easily. And then I want to make a little bit of a bow. Sorry for the lighting change. I did this over a course of many days. This is why it took me so long to get this video out. It's been a little while since I've had one. So thanks for your patience with me. I like to put out one video a week, but that hasn't been happening. So I made a little bow out of that lace ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I could have just hooked the wreath itself on the screw, but I felt like it was going to not go on as easy. So I'm just going to use a piece of floral wire, fleet feed that through and make a little loop and trim that off. We will use that to hang that on. And I will show you the finished product at the end. So for this next DIY, this little easel, chalkboard easel, I believe it was from Dollar General. It was a dollar and I probably paid less than that. Um, but Dollar Tree has had similar items and I'm just using these gold butterfly rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. I love these little pink handled scissors. They might have had different colors as well, but they are from the Dollar Tree in their Crafter Square area. They're little tiny precision scissors, and it's very handy for these types of things. So I'm going to just tell you that I struggled with this. And you can't even see it totally well because there's reflection on the plastic covering of the rub-on transfer. I don't know if the issue was the chalkboard finish that I was doing this on. Um, these particular transfers don't have a lot of stickiness to them. So as I was rubbing it on, it was shifting and then I was trying to place it back to where it was to continue. So yeah, this DIY is literally just putting transfers on this sign. Um, and I do like how it came out. I think it's going to be really a really cute um, filler piece, probably to be used on a tiered tray is kind of my thoughts. And it's nice to have stuff that doesn't have words in it. Sorry, my head. I was really focusing on this, guys, so I kept getting in the way of the camera. And uh, But once I started here, I was like, I like these rub-on transfers. This labor of love is going to continue. And I continued until I got a few of them on there. So I do like how it came out. Um, the gold rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree definitely are not as easy as some of the, of the other ones. But I'm going to show you me using these on the next... DIY as well, just so that you um, can see that they're not always as difficult to use, but they were still a little bit of a challenge. So that is it for this one. I'll uh, give you another glimpse of it at the end as well. All right, so for this next one, I'm using the sign that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on clearance, but there are similar shaped and size signs um, at Dollar Tree. So once again, I changed my mind on some of this. So we're going to start by giving it a coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink, which I do think was a good choice because it probably covered the writing in the back better than white, but you're going to see a drastic change in appearance here. So giving this a coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in ink on the inside and the whole frame. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a very easy way to help me out. It lets YouTube know that you are enjoying what I'm doing and it makes them more likely to share my video with others. It also lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm doing and helps me know what you guys like to see. So just give it a little thumbs up. It's easy. Just, just do it. If you haven't done it yet, please do it. All right, so moving on, I was going to go for more of the similar look of the, the first piece. So I'm going in with some Waverly Chalk Paint in Fern. And yeah, we're gonna just we're just gonna skip past some of this. So now I'm going in with, with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I do a couple coats of that. I was trying to go for another way to get some of this like chippy, rustic, old look, and it worked. But I don't think I did it the best way. But you know, sometimes I just like to just try things. I fly by the seat of my pants when I do my crafting. In case you haven't figured that out. And then I was like, I don't really want to do the black. I thought I was going to do the black because I was going to do all those gold butterflies. And I liked how it looked in the packaging contrast against the black. But then I didn't like it. So then I went in with white. So the inside, we're just going to give that a couple of coats of white 
And then once everything was dry, I tried to, to sand off the edges for some of that black and green to pull through, which did work on the edges. So it wasn't like it was a total loss. It definitely still rust, uh, rustic, I was going to say rustic -ed it up, but that's definitely not a word. But I think you can make up words. Um, I, that's what I've seen. Rustic. I rusti rustified it. Rust I made it rustic. So there you go. You can see. The colors did come through, and I do like how it came out. So now what I'm going to do is put the gold butterfly rub-on transfers around the frame of this, and it did transfer easier than on the chalkboard sign, but they still just do not have any, like a lot of the other ones have more stickiness when you put them down. These just want to shift on you. So I still like them, but it's a lot more work than the other ones. So if, if, if you have them already, you can make it happen, but just know that it's going to be a little bit more work. They also have these little flower pieces on there, and I just kind of did these around the whole thing. I did curve some of the butterflies kind of like over the edge, wrapped it around a little bit. Um, I just kind of wanted um, a little glimpse, glimpse of them on the frame. And I do, like I said, I like how it came out. But hang with me, we got more on this journey because this thing takes a lot of different turns. So that is how the frame came out. Love that. So far, so good. Then I take this stencil from the Dollar Tree and I was going to do the It's Good to Be Home. And the words themselves fit in there, but the stencil itself did not. So I had to bend it, which is fine. It's a flexible stencil. Um, I could have trimmed the edges, but I didn't want to mess it up. I've used this stencil before. I will plan to use it again. So I just maneuver in there, tape it down, and I thought, I'll go in with these paint markers. I will have less bleed through. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I also wasn't glad that I chose black. Um, I don't know. It just wasn't coming together how I wanted it to. But we're going we're gonna to paint it here. And um, then I'm going to fill in the gaps on the words on the top because I just I wasn't giving up on it yet. And then I finally said, nope. Not, not happy with it. There's a lot of bleed through on the M and the E on home, which you can't really see, but there was. So I go back through, I sand that down in the middle, cover it again with some white paint, and we're just going to do a very, very light dry brush of the color Fern, just to kind of tie in the background with the edges. Guys, I sat on this project for a couple days because I was just like, I had this idea in my mind, but it was just like a general idea and I could not figure out how to make it happen. But I did make it happen. I found these word rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree in my stash. It was just a whole sheet of random words that I've been using. I don't have a lot of them left. And when I think of butterflies, I really wanted to do butterflies. I don't know why. It's not like butterflies has always been my thing. But I like butterflies. I think they're beautiful. I think um, they scream spring. And anyways, I think their transformation is beautiful and, I don't know, symbolic in a lot of ways. Anyways. I picked out Discover the Journey because the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly is an amazing journey and the beauty on the other side is just awesome. So that's what I'm going with. And I, then I picked up these stickers from the Dollar Tree. They have a ton of these. These are like some 3D pop-out ones. I, they have a lot, of, some with like a lot more gold. I wasn't really going for that, but I love these ones. I love the colors of these, but there was probably like half a dozen different ones to choose from, literally. So I just picked out the ones I liked the best. I'm using a little bit of like a tacky glue. I don't know the sticker on the back of these might be good enough, but I didn't want to risk it. So I just put on some glue there as well. Back to the one that was kind of a fail, but I will still definitely use this as a filler piece on a tiered tray. And then these are the two winners of the show to me. I'm very pleased with how these both came out. The little window frame with the wreath and then my butterfly sign. I know there's a shadow on there, but I do love how this came out. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is going to do it for today's video. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe.